I never imagined that my work would have the impact it did because at the time uh, when we when we started doing this 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 work this research uh, it was not clear how far the technology would go in in, in the future. Well, you know, I'm interested in how things work. This is my interest, my basic interest, whether it is radios or something else. I want to understand things. And this was a strong motivation for me eventually to go to university. And, and this was also uh, the reason why I decided to become a physicist. Because I thought, well, you know, as a physicist, I can, I can really better understand how nature works. So this was, this was a, my cu curiosity was, a, was a, the main motivation to, 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 to do that. One reason was there were no liquid crystals available at that time, at that time which were uh, liquid crystalline at room temperature. So I had to perform my experiments first at a very high temperature, 110 degrees C. And uh, the, the second problem was uh, the, the, the driving voltage. We expected a much higher driving voltage than what I eventually found in my experiments, about 20 times higher than we actually found. And this was very surprising. So this was a this was a great moment when when uh, it was a Saturday morning when I when I succeeded to make the first uh, uh, you know repeatable switching experiment uh, and uh, I found that uh, this thing switches already at about two and a half three volts instead of forty to fifty volts. Together with my with, with my colleagues in the chemical department, uh, we developed liquid crystal molecules which were indeed pneumatic liquid crystalline at room temperature. So we made the first room temperature commercial liquid crystal material. A lot of people were skeptical about the feasibility of liquid crystal displays in general. You know, organic materials in electronics, this was something very strange at the time. So Roche decided to stop the liquid crystal research project for two years. And uh, I switched over to, to biophysics. Two years later, after Roche had terminated this uh, liquid crystal research project, Roche was approached by a Japanese company to sell the pre-cinematic patent to them. And then I was contacted by the head of the legal department asking me what this patent was about and whether Roche should, should, should sell it. And I said, no, I, I don't think you should sell this because this is much more broadly applicable than just for watches. The company was a watch company who was interested to buy the patent. So Roche started to license the pre-cinematic effect and I got the opportunity to, to manage uh, uh, a research and development team of chemists and physicists, uh, further developing the technology and also, and this, this was very important, to develop new materials, liquid crystal materials, suitable for electro-optical field effects. So Roche became a major player in the, in the liquid crystal material uh, field and also in licensing, of course, the technology to the electronics industry, which then developed into an LCD industry. Yes, I feel a good sense of accomplishment when I see this technology, and I'm very happy to see how, how, how they improved, you know, how much they improved, and how much effort uh, of many many people came into this and and, and make it and make it work. <laughs>